Okay, we have star chart number two and star chart number three here in Google Drawings. And what we're going to be trying to do is find the field of view. In other words, we're trying to determine which stars are visible and which stars are hidden by the Earth. So as we follow the instructions, what we're going to do is uh, say file and then say make a copy. And so for this one, I'm going to put my initials at the beginning to make sure that I distinguish it from other files. This is in Google Drawings. And so by making a copy for yourself, for your own Google account, it will allow you to edit this document. Otherwise, you won't be able to edit that other one. All right, so that's the first step. And then it says basically find the field of view by labeling all of these things for a particular day. Now, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that date. I'm actually gonna do a different one. How about I do February 5th instead? You can see that uh, the dates along the top of this correspond to the location of the meridian at 8 p.m. Now, the reason why we choose 8 p.m. is because that's about when it gets dark enough. So we're going to do a couple of things here. We're going to, first of all, label the meridian. So maybe I can, uh, you know, paint that red so you know which one I'm working on first. So what I'm going to do is uh, make a line that's going to go from February 5th and go straight down. I think I can hold the shift key and it'll force it to go vertical straight up and down. Make it maybe four pixels wide and maybe give it some color red. I'm also going to label it. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. So I should have selected this select tool before I did that. I'm going to move the, move the label up here to this right here. So this is the, the meridian, the line that uh, goes from the north horizon point to the south horizon point. It goes through the celestial equator and all the way up to the zenith. Now, the way to find the zenith on February 5th at 8 p.m. on the star chart is to measure 32 degrees up from this point. So maybe what I can do is make a little circle and let's find 32 degrees. It's right about there. And you can do the geometry on this and determine um, why it is that if you measure at a declination of 32, that corresponds to the location of your zenith. So when you're doing your own date, which will be September um, the 5th, you're gonna do the similar kind of thing where you're gonna label the zenith and um, the meridian. All right, so I've labeled that so far. I can paint it red to keep track of what I've done. Now we need to put the horizons out there. Now it's pretty easy. The bottom line right here is approximately equal to the horizon. Um, it's really a, at 58. You can see a minus 60 degrees right there. The south horizon is really at minus 58 because of you know 90 degrees minus 32 gives you the the, the negative 58 there. But that's going to be close enough. The north horizon point is way off the chart on star chart number one, so we're not going to label that one. Now the east and west horizon can be found by basically measuring um, you know, half of this entire length here. And you can see it goes from zero uh, to 12 and then back over here to 12 and then all the way up to 24. So basically half of this, half of the sky is gonna to correspond to 12 uh, hours of bright ascension. That means that what we can do is grab a rectangle shape like this and let's go uh, six hours to the right. And I think that's six hours right there. Did I do that right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is going to be our field of view. I better make it somewhat transparent so I can see through it. Um, anyway, uh, let's see. I guess I can keep it uh, a little bit red like that as well. So this is uh, part of the sky we're going to see to the right of the meridian. And it turns out that um, this is going to be our west horizon. You might think that this should be the east horizon over here, but it turns out to be the west horizon because we're looking up into the sky rather than looking down onto, say, a map of Texas where east is to the right. In a similar way, we can take a uh, rectangle and find the rest of the field of view or we could just extend this one right here, another six degree, uh, six hours the other way. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I guess if we perhaps make it a little bit bolder, maybe a little too much there. 
a dotted line perhaps. Um, we can now see that everything inside of this dotted line, roughly speaking, is going to be visible. So on February 5th, Orion should be near the meridian and Pisces should be near the west horizon. And then let's rotate this one over like that and put it over here. And we'll see that Leo should be rising near the east horizon. The celestial equator is simply that line going through the middle, so we can label it right there, no problem. And then we look at the dates along the ecliptic to figure out where the sun is. So it's kind of blurry for me. I'm sure it might be blurry for you guys as well. That's why we gave you a PDF version with high resolution to read those. And we're looking for February 5th, approximately. That looks to be 9th, maybe right there. So uh, the sun would be right there in the sky on, in my case, February 5th at 8 p.m., which means it's not in the field of view. It makes sense. It has uh, set on the west horizon as these uh, uh, stars are rising up here. So for every, for every hour after 8 p.m., this entire window moves one hour of right ascension to the left. Okay, so that's what I want you to do with this uh, is to do a similar kind of thing, but do it for another date, whatever date you find on here, which will probably be September 5th.